When Nikon bought RED in March of 2024, I was seriously intrigued of what a Nikon and RED camera would look like. Now we finally know, because the Nikon ZR is here. When you are getting into video production, RED quickly gains your attention as being the epitome of a production camera with amazing image quality and beautiful natural color signs. It's a dream to any starting videographer to one day own a RED camera. Now has Nikon actually made that a possibility with the ZR at $2200? A RED camera for half the price of an FX3. This is a no-brainer, right? Well. Not that fast. You see, this camera shoots in red code RAW in 12-bit, which means the file sizes are huge. And I mean huge. One of the selling points of my Fuji X-H2S at the time was being able to shoot ProRes internal. I bought a 512 gig CF Express card to chew down to 450 megabits per second codec, but I have yet to actually shoot in ProRes. And I've had this camera for over three years. It always felt like overkill and a bit cumbersome to store that much data for my work. Well, this Redcode RAW 12-bit shoots at a whopping 1,520 megabits per second, so more than three times as big. Now that is actually ridiculous. And when you dumb down to 10-bit H.265, you actually have to shoot in Nikon lock, because there's no red codec. While this camera is much more suited towards indie filmmakers, YouTubers, small productions, etc., the only red way of using this camera is shooting this insane raw codec. Now for the actual red cameras like the Komodo, Raptor, etc., that makes sense because they're being used in big productions and the huge data isn't necessarily that big of an issue. Certainly not as big as to a solo filmmaker with some Samsung T7s laying around making videos for social media consumption. If you want to give people a mini baby red camera, it would make much more sense for them to be able to use the more compressed 10-bit Redlock 3 and keep their file sizes down. That way you could actually use that red DNA in a much more affordable and smaller body. Right now it feels to me that Nikon is luring people in with putting the red logo on your camera, show this amazing image quality in initial reviews online, but people actually not being aware that in order to get that quality and red color signs, your workflow is going to be a major pain in the ass. Now, if this camera had the ability to shoot in 10-bit red lock, I would be seriously tempted to swap out my FX30 and use the ZR as my main workhorse in terms of video production. It's a nice first step into the collaboration, and I'm sure much more intriguing options are coming in the future. But right now, for me, the major red appeal of the ZR has got to be the major drawback at the same time. That's it for me, guys, and as always, on to the next one.